Derek prove his worth. Derek enjoyed his time on Edward's branch line. He got on well with a lot of engines. He even impressed Donald and Douglas, the Scottish twins. James and Henry soon follow, except Gordon. Even though he liked Derek, but he didn't like him for the fact that he is loud and smoky. Careful with the smoke, said Gordon crossly. This is a brand new coat. Sorry, said Derek. Don't pay too much attention to Gordon, said Henry. He always says say those words when it comes to engines who often fail. In fact, I actually was a failed engine too. The fat controller was determined to keep me running as always, regardless of my condition. And you did change. I heard that you had an old shape. Yes, that's true. But after my incident with the flying kipper, I was completely a new engine. Very soon, Gordon will warm up to you. I hope so. A few days later, Derek pulled into Edward's station. He was surprised to see that Edward wasn't ready to pull his passengers. Why are you pulling it right now? He asked. Well, it's been delayed because Gordon was coming by with a long express train. I heard it's going to be the longest in a long time. Really? When was the last time he actually pulled a very long train? On his first day of Sodor. The fat controller, who was also at Edward Station, waiting on the platform to see Gordon thundering past, and just in time, as Gordon thundered through, whistling loud and long. But something doesn't seem right. That's strange, said Edward. Gordon didn't have a brake coach. Maybe he'd forgotten one, said Derek. The fat controller disagreed. All passenger trains must require brake coaches. It's against the... But before the fat controller finished... Edward spoke. Um, I think I found the brake coach. Oh, Gordon! bellowed the fat controller. They are slowly rolling into the station with the last two coaches of the express train. The guard managed to stop it within the station. The passengers were not happy at all. The coupling must have broken off as he approached the station, said the station master. I could see that, said the fat controller. Oh dear, by the time Gordon realized what had happened, he should be at the other end by now. What are we going to do? Then Derek had an idea. Sir, why not I push the coaches back to Gordon? You're sure you can do it, even under your double achieving trouble engine? Well, I'll give my best shot. We have no time to lose. Uh, Alright then, said the fat controller. Quickly... Derek backed down onto the coaches and pushed the coaches down the line back to Gordon. Oh no, not this hill, said Derek. He charged up the hill and hoping his engine would last. Eventually, he found himself coasting down the other side. Hooray, my teething troubles are over, he said to himself. Fortunately, Gordon then travelled towards the other end of the line. Instead, he stopped at the station near the electric railway. The station master told Gordon's crew about what happened. Well, I guess we just had to go back and fetch the remaining coaches. Well, that means we're going to be even more late, grumbled the passengers. Gordon felt depressed. Just as Gordon's driver went into the cab, they could hear a horn. It was Derek. Well, I guess we don't need to go back then, said the fireman. The diesel managed to rescue the stranded passengers in the last coaches. Gordon felt very relieved. The crew were able to make a new coupling for the last two coaches. And once they were done, Gordon continued on, before blowing his whistle to say thank you to Derek. Afterwards, Derek managed to warn Gordon's trust, and the two of them became close friends. Edward was glad that Gordon finally accepts Derek, and everyone gets along at last.